All right, everyone. I want to show you something real quick before I make my way to our first town of the day, Karori Town, which is only 500 meters behind me, and I'm sure you will like it. Well, that's the entire Nairobi skyline at the back, and you can clearly see the GTC building if you are well familiar with Nairobi. And the fact that we are in some 20 kilometers away from the city in Kiambu County and with this kind of view is quite fascinating. Let me get to a higher point so that I can clearly show you the view. And remember this is a high altitude area. Actually we are 2000 meters above sea level. It is the entry point of the so-called Central Highlands or the mountain region. The small civilization on your left is Ruaka Town. And it is actually less than 3 kilometers from here. And on your right is Denderu Township, which is less than 2 kilometers away from here. While the beautiful Nairobi city is at the back. Apart from Banana Hills, we are also going to visit another small town in the area, which has a very unique history. And so make sure you watch the video until the end. Let me quickly show you where we are on the map. And you can see the dotted circle on the far left corner. That's Banana Hills for you. Now let's make our way to our first town of the day, which will be hitting in less than a minute. But before we get there, let me take this opportunity to welcome you to our YouTube channel, Village to Town, a channel that is dedicated to continue showcasing beautiful villages, towns, and cities across the continent of Africa. If you are one of our new subscribers, please feel at home. Thanks for the support, I appreciate the love. And if you have not yet subscribed or you are new here, kindly show some love by subscribing. Now back to our video, and it is good to point out that the town has a high concentration of government entities, institutions and offices. I will be showing you some, especially the hospital and school, but I won't be able to film some of the government offices uh, since I don't have a budget for a lawyer for now. Well, that's on a later note. But it is good to note that the town serve as the Kiamba district headquarters, and so the DCC office is here, a police station, and various government regional offices. All these offices are concentrated on this small road I have just joined, especially on my left. And trust you me, you are more likely to meet a police vehicle than any other car around this place. There is also a high school, a KMTC, and a level 4 hospital. And I have just spotted the area MP office, who is one John Jogona Kawanjiko. Actually, one of you told me to be naming political leaders from an area. And I just quickly checked his profile online before coming here. And I was informed that... The guy got really popular across the country after winning a hotly contested by election right before the 2022 general election in Kenya. Well, that's Kawanjiko for you. And it is also good to note that this area has had other prominent members of parliament, including the famous Jenga Karume, who rose to stardom after amassing a crazy amount of wealth without having a formal education. The wealthy Koinange dynasty also hails from the area and actually a few of them have held the Kiamba MP seat. And actually you can see a bunch of police officers on your left. And as I told you, this is the area, meaning that security is also quite high. Let's leave politicians and their dirty games and quickly check out the numbers before we hit the town center and see how businesses are faring in this side of the country. Currently, the town has a population of 194,000 people, which I find kind of crazy. It's actually higher than most constituencies in Kenya, including some in Kiambu, such as Gatundo South, and the Gizungori constituencies, which we visited in our last video. You can actually go and check on YouTube. It is quite interesting to note that the high population is not a new thing in the area, as Karori had a population of 19,000 people in 1999 which 10 years later increased to 107,000. That's a crazy increase. And currently stand at 194,000. It is also good to note that the entire constituency, Kiamba, which Karuri serve as the headquarter, 
has a population of 236,000 people, meaning that more than half of the entire population lives here. In terms of gender distribution, well, the female population is at 99,600, well, that of their male counterparts, it's at 94,700. Well, this means that there's a difference of 5,000 in favor of female, making it uh, quite interesting for a male to live here and a disaster for women, I'm just saying. I want to enter the market area, which is on the left, and explore. Actually, it also serves as the whole town, and I expect to see some of the oldest buildings in the town as the town was initially designated by the government to be right here before it is spread elsewhere. And one thing that has really caught my eye is the state of this road, uh, which serves the main market. Trust you me, it has seen better days. And I hope you can see the open air market on the left. I want to go around the market and show you, but it seems like the road is closed. Actually, there is a street vendor uh, who is having a field day on the road and I don't want to disturb his business as he's looking for his daily bread and so let me just make a turn around and have a nice view on the other side of the market and I want you to take a look at this shop in front of me wow it's quite old the building is quite old even the building model it's old school it seems like the building was among the first to be built in this market and the fact that it is a permanent house, it tells you about the progress, the economic progress of this area in the 70s and 60s and 80s. I would really love to know when this building was set up. So if you come from the area and you have a clue, just tell us on the comment section below. The feeder road is on a very bad state. So if you're close to the area governor, just tell him to do something. Let's get back to the numbers. And one of the major things that really caught my eyes about the area population is the high number of people identifying as intersex. Remember the 2019 general census had a provision that allowed those people identifying as intersex, meaning those who have both male and the female genitalia, to be counted as an independent gender. Well, this town had a total of 12, which was quite high, especially compared to the fact that the entire constituency of Kiamba had only 15. This means that out of all the people identifying as intersex in the entire constituencies, only three are outside here. This is a bit alarming, especially when considering that Kiamba constituency has a total of five wards, with Karori being one of them. Well, this is part of the town's residential area, and the road also seems very pathetic. It seems to be a common issue, in the area well i thought it was only the market feeder road that was in a bad state but by the look of things it is a major issue actually i also wanted to go around this road and checking out the residential area but as you can see ahead this road is impassable there are big trenches and stones on the road which make it hard for a small car to maneuver once more the county government should do something as this is a prime area, as a quick look on the internet shows that to get a 50 by 100 plot of land, we will need more than 4 million Kenya shilling, which is a bit expensive compared to other areas in the country, meaning that the county government is letting the residents down. Most people prefer renting houses, especially due to the high cost of owning a home, where to get a good bed sitter, which is commonly referred to as a studio apartment in the West, you will need between 6,000 Kenya shillings and 10,000 Kenya shillings, depending on its location, which is between 40 and 80 US dollars. Well, to get a two-bedroom apartment, uh, which is suitable for a family, you will need between 15,000 Kenya shillings and 30,000, which is roughly between 120 and 250 US dollars. Karuri town also has a suburb called Banana Hill, which can be considered as a town of its own, and most people tend to confuse between the two, as they can't tell the difference between Banana and Karuri. There is a common fallacy in the area that Karuri is the government administration zone, which we started by visiting, while Banana is the town, which I took as a rumor, 
as I did not find any reliable information differentiating the two. So if you are aware about the difference, I think it will be nice if you let us know in the comment section down below. Let's check the age distribution uh, before I tell you how the town was founded and the founder, as there is a very interesting story behind that. And Kiamba seems to have very interesting numbers as far as age distribution is concerned. And I would love to know what you think about it. What really caught my eye is that out of the 236,000 people, only 7,000 people were aged 65 and above. Well, this is only 3% of the population, which is, is a bit crazy. So far, I have not seen such numbers elsewhere. And the shocker does not end there, as only 346 people are aged 90 and above. It seems like most people die early. I don't know why. Maybe it's high stress level or some common diseases. I feel like this is an area that needs more research. Those aged 0 to 9 uh, forms the bulk of the population as there are 51,500 children in this bracket, meaning that the population is increasing naturally, which is a positive thing. Well, I was looking for the town's information before getting here. One of the things that really caught my eye is how the town got its name. Did you know that the town got its name from a very fascinating character who is not even from this area? Well, the small town got its name from one Karuri son of Gakure who was a paramount chief in Muranga and was a ruler even before the white men came to Kenya. After reading his story, I considered him as the chief hustler of the 19th century as the guy maneuvered from being just a nobody to having towns across the country named after him. History goes that Karuri Gakure was born in 1840 in Muranga County, which is about 100 kilometers away from here. He spent the better part of his youth hunting down elephants for ivory, which he could sell to Arabs. Well, the dude noted at some point that the trade was not making enough and it was time for change. His new career of choice was a traditional healer. I remember he had no talent or any skills associated with medicine. This meant that the hustler only had one option to get his job, bribing his way up. For that he got, he bought his first hubs and moved to Kiambu from Branga, where the business was lucrative. His first targets were young Kikui warriors who would frequently raid nearby Maasai villages, purporting to sell them a concussion that made them invisible. Well, this made Karuri very rich, and when the first European was spotted in the area, the guy saw another opportunity. This time around, he was going to collaborate with them, and in fact, he is accredited for convincing the British to establish a colonial post in Muranga. To repay him, they made Karuri a very powerful senior chief in his area, where he had powers to appoint other leaders in the colonial government, including the famous Wango Makeri. It is at this area where he would frequently visit to meet other senior chiefs, and that's how the town got its name. We are approaching our second town, Raini Town, and before we get there, I'm reminded that the then chief hustler was cornered in his own game when he was convinced to convert to Christianity. A story goes that he was baptized Joseph, and the church convinced him to undertake a Christian wedding to his first wife, so that he could become a full Christian. This forced him to denounce all his other wives as illegitimate, who by then were more than 60, and that's how he lost. We are approaching Raini town. It is a beautiful day, as you can see. It is on a Friday afternoon, and the sun is on our side, which means that we are getting the best picture at the moment. We are approaching the town from the Limuru side, and remember the town is only about 3 kilometers away from our first town, Banana. In fact, it is considered as a satellite town of Karuri. You can call it a shopping center, if you don't mind. But based on the sizes of most shopping centers in Kiambu and Nairobi, most of them can qualify to be towns elsewhere. Well, the small town derives its name from the English word, line which most Kikuyu's ethnic speakers, who form the majority of people living in this area, could not pronounce, and so they pronounced it as Raini. Well, during the colonial era, the town marked as the line between the White Highlands 
and the native lands where the locals were stashed in colonial villages. Well, this never changed even after the country got independent in 1963 as the status quo remained. This very road served as the line, as on my left is the Hoyt Highlands, which currently has some of the biggest tea plantations in Africa. They extend from here all the way to Limuru, where on the right is Raini village. Actually, we can say that the town is one-sided, as there is no single building on the left, while the locals are squeezed in small parcels of land on the right, which usually measures 50 by 100. History goes that when the country got its independence in 1963, land was not redistributed as most people had anticipated. Instead, new black lords occupied where their white counterparts had occupied, and so the status quo continued. Well, I know most of you are not ready for this kind of conversation, and so do I, and so let's shove it for some other time. Please continue watching the video until the end, and if you have managed to watch the video until now, it means you somehow like what we do. And so please kindly consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, Village to Town, so that we can grow together. Like the video so that it can be recommended to as many people as possible. Also press the notification bell so that every time we post, you will be among the first few people to be notified. Thank you.